No, I need this here. Yeah, yeah, you get, you got, you got the glow up now. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. So, um, today we pull it up in as we know one. Oh yeah. Hey guys, today we'll be talking to you about the UCAT and we'll be talking about the general format of it and mm -hmm. things that we personally did to study for it and how you can tackle it as well. So the UCAT is split into five main sections. You will have a two hour online exam to complete these five sections. Now, they are split into Verbal reasoning as the first section. Verbal reasoning, straight comprehension. English yeah. comprehension, text, answers about the text. Second section, you've got decision making, which I think it's fair to say is a quite different way of thinking, no? Yeah, I think it more sees how you make a decision when information is given to you in an abstract way. Yeah, and, and it's, not, it's, it's not it's not something you get used to, but it just yeah. wants to see how you adapt and read a question. I think that with this section, it, the practice is the main, the main thing, right? And we'll go on to that later on in the video. So decision-making, I'll give you a little, little example. It's if Sam, Jim, Caitlin and Sally were in a race, Sam beats Jim, but Caitlin beats Sally. Where does Ben finish in the race? You know, it's just it's just working working your way logically through a puzzle that mm -hmm. they pre present to you. And that's decision making. That's the second section. Third section is quantitative reasoning. That is your maths, and there is a maths section. So this is, and it's important to note, the maths level that they're targeting in terms of the standard of maths is no further than a grade A at GCSE mm -hmm. or a grade seven at GCSE. Mm -hmm. So. It's not a, 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 a test designed to test your mathematic ability. It's about the speed of how you're working through the maths. It's yeah. quite table-based, statistic-based. Yeah, or... I wouldn't say it's something like they'll give you like an equation mm. and be like, find, uh, find the answer for X. It's mm. more like they'll give you a piece of text. I will be like, um, there's a jar full of pennies. Mm. There's some of our loose change to go here. Mm. And then you, you just need to be able to look at different elements of a, of a question and pick out all of the relevant information yeah. about the maths and be able to work yeah. from there. Uh, I do remember a lot of tables, mm -hmm. um, you know, analysing tables and graphs and things like that as well. So mm -hmm. that's the math section. The um, fourth section is abstract reasoning. Now, abstract reasoning is your non-verbal reasoning. Uh, and non-verbal reasoning is about how you can identify uh, between different shapes and patterns between shapes, odd ones out, missing things, um, what's common in four objects but different in mm -hmm. one. That's your ab that's abstract reasoning, and that's something that comes under something called non-verbal reasoning. That's you know they're the same; they test the same kind of thing. Um, and that's that's your fourth section. Mm -hmm. Fifth section: situational judgment. Now this is how you, as a dental student or medical student, are react. Uh, how you react in a certain scenario. So if I was to give you an example, right? You are a dental student, mm -hmm. and you see something in a um, a staff room that you, you know, you feel a little bit uncomfortable about. How would you react in this situation? If yeah. I give you five options, what would you do? Yeah, and that, that that's what the um, format is. They'll give you five different. Um, Scenarios that could play out, yeah. and you have to choose the most appropriate yeah. one yeah. For, uh, for, for, for what would be right if you were a dentist. Yeah, so it's a scenario and then five actions. Mm -hmm. Which actions would you take? And yeah, that's, that's your SJT. So this test doesn't really guarantee you a spot at dental school if you do amazingly well. Mm -hmm. However, it's just another thing that can be used by universities mm -hmm. to differentiate your application from other applicants. So you can have applicant A, applicant B, yeah. exact same work experience, exact same yeah. uh, printed grades, grades, everything, yeah. and one has a higher you UCAT, UCAT, UCAT score. UCAT, yeah. And if those two candidates are borderline, you're choosing between two of them, uh, UCAT could be a deciding factor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is important to mention, though, that some universities do place a higher importance mm. on UCAT than others. Um, that's worth checking. Um, some universities do make it clear that they put higher importance on UCAT, so just be careful about where you're applying. Yeah. 
I started revising for the UCAT yeah. maybe a month before I booked my exam and I would normally do maybe like an hour a day right. very light and eventually up the hours and up the revision yeah. closer to the time yeah. but I know for a lot of people it, it was very different yeah so. there's, there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of debate with the UCAT how you know how, when are you supposed to start revising for it a lot I heard a lot of people say it's about a short sharp burst and you kind of you peak and you know you give yourself two three weeks right and you, you get up to speed and then once you're doing once you've peaked that's when you need to do your exam whereas someone like you you find it more comfortable doing it a long you know about a month or so in advance you know slowly slowly and then accelerate it towards the end right yeah whereas some people just accelerate it towards the end that that was me i would do it was about two three weeks three weeks i'd say three weeks intense so but i was doing about you know four or five hours a day of questions you know not, not all in one go but just in the day about four hours or five hours worth of questions mm -hmm. each day for a two three week period it's brutal but it's it, that's what you got to do you've just got to get through the questions yeah and i think yeah like i said it depends person to person what works yeah. for you yeah, but, yeah yeah definitely um and yeah so that leads us on to the next point about how did we revise mm -hmm. um how did we prepare what are the questions you're on about so this is mainly uh for me was only two main websites um i would encourage you to do more than that uh, have a wider spread but for me I was okay with uh, a website called Medify and I was just going through banks of questions there are thousands of questions on there on each subject and the more more importantly um, the UCAT website has practice papers don't know if you've seen them mm -hmm. but they are really good and very realistic and the most um, similar thing to your exam is on the UCAT official website and the past papers that they've got. Yeah, so for me, I prepared by using a UCAT book and you can get these off Amazon and uh, exactly the same, loads of questions, mm -hmm. exactly how the format is, but um, it's in a book and I revise better that way. Mm -hmm. But I do encourage to go on to like your laptop and yeah. try to do it online as well because that's how your exam's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you can get used to the fo the online format mm -hmm. um, because yeah, the exam's going to be online, so you might as well get 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 used to that. Yeah, and with the uh, fifth section, the situation of judgment. Situation of judgment. Yeah. Um, like you explained before, this is a bit different. And one way that I well, that really helped me revising for this was working with somebody else. Right. So I'm quite lucky that I have an uncle who's a GP. So sitting down with him, going through the questions together, really helped um, get an understanding of what an actual professional yeah. uh, review would be in a point like that. And it really did help highlight that uh, you need to start thinking like a professional yeah. and start thinking what is the right thing to do in the situations. Absolutely, yeah. And um, even if you don't have like somebody with medical experience to help you with this, I found how sitting down with friends, going through it together, is also a good way to understand the different sides of it. Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't have anyone who's you know uh, any any medical experience in my family. Um, what I found was with with the SJT, with the situational judgment, is 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 similar to most of the other sections for me. The more questions you do, the more used to the style of question and style of answer you're supposed to be giving. Mm. So you can kind of gauge right. This is the type of thinking that I ought to have as a dental student, and you get that. Yeah, the more questions you do that was me that's yeah. how i learned so i think anything that gauge from our vision is just do as much work as you can just practice papers practice questions yeah. and stuff like that really help yeah. you get used yeah. to what you will experience in the actual yeah. UK exam when you walk into your test center um you'll go to a reception desk and there um, the receptionist will give you some information about the exam, uh, a few terms and conditions that you need to be familiar with, um, just standard procedure. Um, and you'll need to provide you with your name and some ID. So once that's this all done, you're taken mm -hmm. into the, um, the actual room where you'll be taking yeah. the exam on the computer mm -hmm. and you will have normally a short tutorial about yes. how to use a computer some tips and tricks and it is quite good to pay attention to this because it highlights yeah. the importance of like yeah. um, some certain keys like pressing N will go to the next question. Yeah. You can flag questions yeah. so if you're not too sure about it flag it up, mm -hmm. move on and come back to it at the end within your respective time frame yeah. and I think it is quite good for you to get used to it and relax and get ready 
for the the actual test yeah that's it yeah what you just said now so you know that little bit before your exam when you when you just first go into the exam room it's a really good kind of cooling down period where mm -hmm. you just listen to the tutorial you get familiar with this with the with, with this you know the setting the, the the atmosphere that you're in um and the the computer like how it's going to be and you know exactly what's coming basically it's a really good little five ten minutes yeah that's really crucial and you should just chill out in that period so once you've done yeah. your two hour exam yep. um yeah, even though it does seem like a, lot, a long time, it does go, go past pretty Extremely quickly. quickly. And then once you are done and you're finished with the exam, the computer will tell you so. And uh, uh, one of the modulators will come yeah, in yeah, and yeah. take you back out. And honestly, as soon as you go back out, your, your results are there and yeah. you will go to reception again. And the receptionist will hand you a piece of paper yeah. with your with score your, on with it. Your, with your test result. So the way the UCAT is marked is that the first four sections are all out of 900 each. Yeah. And you want to get an average score of about 650 across yeah. these four um, sections. Yeah. And that's what we say is normally a good yeah. uh, ballpark figure to aim for, because that's a really good score. And the SJT, the Situation of Judgment, mm -hmm. is slightly different. It's been given in bands, uh, band one to band four. Band one being the best band and band yeah. four being the worst. And you normally want to aim for yeah. anything band two or higher. Yeah. Um, with, with the marks that you get in the first four sections, um, it's it's actually very dependent on the year average. So we say 650 is something you've got to be aiming for. Um, and, and we're saying that because regardless of the average, I think that will, that will be a safe score, mm -hmm. uh, a good safe score to have. Um, you won't know the year average going into your exam, um, but that's why we say 650 is probably what you should be aiming for. Um, Bands, uh, band one is your most appropriate answers th that you gave um, from the scenarios given. Um, and band four is, you know, the answers you, you gave weren't, you know, the best responses to the scenarios that they provided with you. And this, despite all, the, all this, um, just because you don't get a 650 mm -hmm. or you don't get a high band doesn't mean it's the be and mm -hmm. end all of your dental application mm -hmm. because we're very much aware of people yeah. in our course that didn't score as highly, yeah. uh, didn't get the average yeah. or didn't get high bands yeah. and um, they've still got into dental school yeah. because the other parts of the application are quite strong. Yeah. So I think it is quite important to understand that this isn't just one thing that will decide whether you're yeah. in dental school or not, it's Definitely. just a factor. Definitely. And, and, and also, you know, if, okay, let's say you haven't got as high of a UCAT score than you know than than you would have liked or that you'd have an aim for, um, you know, be careful with your application. If if you haven't really got that high of a UCAT score, don't apply for the universities that require a high UCAT score. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be silly to do that. So you need to be looking at the university that maybe place it of lesser importance, and 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 then you know you've got the rest of your application that that if it's solid, you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you for watching that video on the UCAT exam. Stay tuned for more. Got a body like Mariah. I can turn a body on fire. You said she never done this before. I can tell you're a very good liar.